Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin, and while I was at the Long Beach Expo, I got to go down to Stax Bowers. Thanks to Larry for the invite, and I uh, got to tour the place. And Larry busted out some some coins and blew my mind a little bit and showed me stuff I've never seen before. So thanks, Larry. Kind of impromptu, went through some coins. Uh, you'll hear Larry in the background telling me all about everything, and it's lots of fun. So I hope you guys enjoy this. All right, I'm at Stax Bowers, and I got Larry. Larry is going to show me some stuff. I haven't previewed any of this stuff. He's just going to hand me coins that are going to be at an auction coming up, and so we're going to see what it's like to work at uh, Stax right now. All right, Ben. Let's start with something relatively boring, right? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> 1792 <laughs> halftime. All right, I'll catch you guys in a minute. I'm going to go back to my office. Well, I mean, in the coin collecting world, this is a uh, something that dreams are made of. It's definitely yeah. one of the big ones. You know, there's that whole hypocritical story about them being made from Martha Washington silver because the French didn't come through with their silver shipment. And they needed it, but that's probably hypocritical. You know, it really reminds me of the way some Germanic state coins look and were produced um, almost in a similar time frame. They were a little bit earlier. But I have some German coins that actually, something about the way this coin is actually struck really reminds me of it. And it's just really neat. It's got some really strong luster to it. And, um, you know, uh, I see exactly what you mean. Uh, there's a lot of coins of that era, including, you know, what it reminds me of is the 1720 French 20 souls. It was actually a, a U.S. colonial French coin uh -huh. at the time period, had a very similar portrait. And so I think a lot of the portraiture at the time, you're right, they, they took inspiration from the European countries and other people like that making coins at the time. Uh, really cool design. Is there, a is there an actual, uh, you probably don't have these memorized, mm -hmm. but the actual auction estimate on that? I or don't, but it's going to be several hundred thousand dollars. Or, you know, you know nor, nor, way north of a hundred. Um, here's the next group. So we're look, this one I'm going to cheat a little bit. You asked for singles, but I'm going to give you three of the same type just because they're all individual. They're all incredible. So I'm cheating me, a little bit. Hand me three coins at once. And then oh, I'm I gonna know, have, but they're all the I'm going to drop them. <laughs> Look how lovely that is, though. This is a type that you don't generally come incredibly high grade. You know, you see them all cleaned or messed up. Generally. Well, you know, it's funny you mention that because I had one uh, earlier in the year that I was so excited to get. And it was an AU, but mm -hmm. uh, I w our comment for myself and other people that work in the at the coin shop was, you know, I haven't owned one of these in decades in any grade. And so um, it's such a hard, hard type to get in general in any grade. And then, of course, to have something that's going to be, you know, a full luster, you know, MS-64. And if memory serves, that 1815 is extremely scarce uh, as far as the date. More so than uh -huh. like this one, which is oh, yeah, yeah. much higher grade. And, and actually, if, you know, between you and me, I'd take this one because I like this sort of coin. But, uh, yeah, it just... Look at the surfaces. <laughs> well, that is, you know, sometimes we talk about just what what it is to have the look. Yeah. When you're looking at coins and understanding the difference uh, in grade, and there's just a certain type of quality, and this is why, you know, that's a what John Albany's talks about that with having grade sets, and just being able to go ahead and have something to review to remind yourself, okay, that's what I want a '66 to look like. Yeah, that's gorgeous. That's, I've seen a lot of those, and that's by far one of the best in terms of just overall eye appeal. Though all of these are just absolutely outstanding. This 1819, a variety of 5D over 5O. Ah, it'll be on the reverse. The Let's nomination. take a look on that guy. Oh, yeah, you can make it yeah. out. I think I've got, I think I brought my uh, up close and personal loop here. Let's get that. There's, you can see the over lettering so were they taking that from a 50 cent die like what is the yeah you know I, i'll be i'll be honest ah, with you. i don't know the exact story in this specific coin but yeah they either punched the wrong number or the, the wrong letter in with their, right? their punches What's... and had to fix it uh you know you see this a lot on like mexican spanish <laughs> colonial coins where they just oops they did the wrong thing and they overdid it uh but either way these are just incredible you know half eagles that you don't normally get to see but let's move on to some silver and if we're going to do silver, how about one of the hardest to find, hardest to acquire silver pieces in the whole U.S. type run uh, in the 1796 half dollar? 
you know, 1796 is just tough and everything, isn't it? It is. It is. Because if you want that small eagle design, you know, you have to, especially like quarters, you have to go to the 1796. It's the only date that has the small eagle design with the drape bust. Um, and yeah, it's at 1796 and seven for the half dollars are the stopper dates. <laughs> They're the ones that everybody wants because they want them in their typeset. But they kind of have to go to one of those two very rare dates to get it. So it's just awesome to see, and you never see them when you do see them in high grade, let alone one with original surfaces that hasn't been cleaned or, or mishandled over the years. AU58, um, I better bid on this one. That one's cool. That's a point, actually. Um, I love the, uh, the half, the one half fraction. Also, uh, you know, when you guys see the lines on the coin, those are the adjustment marks on the silver that one's been giving us fits here sorry about that we have the lights going off and on all day here that's all right yeah they have brownouts here <laughs> so um you know those those so there's lines right in front of the two and the one and they actually show up again on the other side of the two and then also you see them a lot under the eagle's legs that's actually pre-strike so that was actually through the bird all of that stuff was when the planchet was adjusted for weight mm -hmm. and then uh, then struck. So that's what those lines are. Also, I mean, this is going to sound strange, but it has kind of a look to it like some of the specimen coins from that time period. There's just something about that finish that's really cool. Yeah. What a, what a neat piece. That's also out of my price range. I think awesome. I'm going to buy a house you know, instead, but I'll that's be honest, okay. some of these are expensive. <laughs> okay, but well. I, think, I think you need to see these two in a pair because they, 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 they complement each other. Here we go again. I know. Stuff I know. in pairs. I told him you can't hand me two things oh, at the here same you go. time. You got some proof. Oh, come Both of them on. are proof. Twenty dollar double eagles, Just but different it. types of finishes. Just stop it. <laughs> so what's fun about this, of course, is you know we've we've been able to show some proof gold in the past, and this is actually graded cameo, which is fun. Has the full cameo to it. Nice black and white finish. Uh, that, that's cool but okay I'm gonna have to get to this in a minute so this is why you can't show them to me at the same time I can't show them I have not handled a matte matte finish proof uh, on the channel before so that's that's fun not that I've handled a 1792 half does me either so but uh, how fun is the proof $20 gold piece guys yeah that's just fun Those proof finishes that you see, we got the strong strike. You know, you get a little bit of the hairlines on there, but that's probably stopping it from being, you know, a gem, gem grade. But those hairlines I can see with my loop, you know, but without the loop, they pop and dance a little bit. But those surfaces are so, so delicate on those proofs. But now what I'm really intrigued to look at is this. So you want to talk about something that's got a different, different look to it. Um, the matte finishes completely different look than what we're used to on most most coins now it has there's that wire rim it just pops you can tell right away with the strike on that that whole area outside of the stars just pops and then of course the rest of the detail in the coin is super strong in fact so much so that if you just showed me this picture right here I would tell you oh we're looking at a modern gold eagle that's exactly what it looks like it's just totally different than what you're used to seeing I'm sure you know the story, Ben, but you, you know the, the matte uh, finisher, the sandblast finish, sand blast. was not fun, uh, very uh, popular at the time with collectors. Mm -hmm. But the main reason that they really wanted to do it and try it at the time was photography as a hobby and as a marketing method was starting to become very popular. And the cameras at the time, when you tried to take a picture of one of the reflective proofs, let's just say the camera technology at the time didn't do very well and so by making a sandblast matte finish on them they were able to take photos of them to put into magazines and things like that. How funny is that? So that's actually where they started and then it kind of they tried to make a couple products from it. Well cameras cameras have a lot of interesting history in the late 1800s early 1900s when it comes to the society and how it shaped because you know they had they were out you had to get a special permit to take a camera into the Colombian World's Fair it's a whole it's a whole thing and now for something completely uh, and different. now for something completely different <laughs> all right so this is not artwork but it is I mean this is this is so cool so this thing feels like a brick because it is but the actual dimensions on this is you know the the, the gold itself it's a gold bar 
and you're talking about a couple inches by a bit inch. Look at that. I'm not a dimensional guy. Here we go. Is that is that the 30.41 ounces? Is that the mm -hmm. stamp on the edge? Correct. Look at that. So this guy sent uh, spent some time down in Davy Jones' locker, but made it back up later. So what do we got up here? What's the company on this one? Is that I have a hard time. Slake and Company. Is that what that says? Yeah, it's assay. Yeah, there's the assay. Assayers. Sacramento, never heard of that yep. place before. <laughs> eight seventeen, that's the purity. Eight seventeen, fine. There's the value. Value a oh, dollar sign. <laughs> uh, the dollar sign's kind of half lost under the toning there. It's five hundred thirteen dollars. I think it's worth 50 a little cents. bit more today. I'd I'd bid five thirteen <laughs> fifty nine, but not a penny more. How how sweet it is, guys. Um, you know, so this is actually what. Uh, some of the shipwreck gold should have looked like that came up on those 1857 Central America coins. And I kind of wish they would have kept it that way. I mean, I think that would have been really pretty epic to have actually some of that original original tone to it. That sound is not me dropping coins. Sorry, that was me. That's someone else. <laughs> someone else entirely. All right. I'm not going to give you two at a time. I'll give you one at a time. But I figured these might be things that you, you guys haven't seen much of, which are patterns. Well, this is a, definitely a Morgan dollar, right? Is that yeah. what we're Well, yeah, it's uh -huh. a little bit uh, different. It's one of them copper 1877 <laughs> ones. 1877 is a strong year for patterns. They made a lot of stuff in the 1870s in general. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the different ideas that were going around for what metal to use on coins, what denominations to make. All of that was going on in the 1860s, you know, post, post Civil War. And of course, things took years and years to do. But I mean, I'm just thinking about all of the transition that you had with the uh, postage paper money, and then going from that into fractional, the rest of the fractional series, and you three cent silver and three cent nickels. And the whole time, the the country, the government, the mint is trying to figure out what type of coins are we going to produce for the next decade or century or however they viewed it, and what type of metals are we going to use. And that, you saw just an explosion of patterns from that time period. That's kind of like the heyday of patterns. 50 cent piece from 1877, go nicely next you know, to mine. And along with that, to your point, here's another example of from the same year in silver where they're trying to make... Yeah, you know they're 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 attempting a different pattern. Say what works. Well, what's fun about this one is uh, I know they're they're both proofs, but of course this has a lot more of a cameo appearance to it. Mm -hmm. It also bears more of a just a smaller Morgan dollar. It's what it kind of it was, like. the, what's interesting, <laughs> and this is something that's not going to really show on the video, but um, it it feels so much heavier than the copper one does. Mm -hmm. And it does have the design of the Morgan dollar on the back. I mean, how fun is that? Yeah, you know, I've had a lot of patterns, and this is one that I haven't held before. This one is sweet. I like um, that one too. It's, it's the, like it's the well, the mini, the mini Morgan. Yeah. Uh, the mini Morgan, 1877, half dollar. That that one's fun. They, you know, well, and we're used to seeing the coinage that came after that with the barbers, where the half. I shouldn't say after that, but you know what I mean. Like the half, the quarter, and the dime were all the same, you know. And you could have ended up with the design that was actually the same on your uh, from the Morgan on down. That would have been interesting. Let me let me hand you one more right now. That uh, since we're in California, oh boy. how about a Cal fractional that is of remarkable quality? Um, certainly not one you see every day. <laughs> just you know, that's just me being speechless because. I get speechless never, but it's a sixty-eight star. That's a grade you don't see very often, even on uh, more modern coins. Um, that is remarkable. Is sometimes when I show coins, I talk about uh, just looking at a certain area and seeing certain things on the surface. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll talk about the type of luster or the strength of the luster or the way the metals flow. And so much of that is seen when you have a coin where it's kind of like it all gets put together. I don't know if any of you have ever like coached or seen kids play or like, or you do a musical instrument. And then like there's a time when they just kind of get it. It just kind of clicks. It all clicks. And then all those pieces come together. So similarly with coin grading, you'll have these little intricacies that eventually they all add up into one, uh, one heck of a coin when you have everything 
everything going for it. And uh, that is cool. You know, it's funny. You see a lot of die polish in the front lines, you mm. know, on the obverse fields uh -huh. there and things that, you know, some collectors, too, I, I see the same thing when they kind of think, hey, that looks like there's a lot of scratches. And it's about knowing the series and knowing that, you know, die right. polish is raised on the I coin. It's not cues into it. Speaking uh, to what like you're that. talking about, those lines, it's they're easier to see right there. Mm -hmm. So I had a, oh, what year was that, a 42 quarter eagle, and uh, it yes. had those lines on it just like that. And so it did, it did have a look to it as though it had, you know, if people are used to just seeing lines and thinking cleaning, that's exactly what it looks like. But then you can see that there are no marks at all when you get the coin at the other angle. And also those types of lines can help to produce just a little bit of a cameo, or not cameo, but more of a proof-like finish, which this coin does. It does. But, but the striations really make it, uh, at certain angles, just go completely matte. And then at other angles, it goes to the PL. Because at this angle, it's like, what, if you first just grab the coin, it's like, oh man, is that a proof? And then you tilt it a little bit, and you get to see a very different finish. Well, and I know you've talked many times in your videos about how pictures can hide things like that, too. The eBay photos, you know, where they turn oh, it a certain way? Yeah, yeah. And so that shows you where like video, like you're doing now, is much more helpful. Because you're able to see the, the coin from different yeah, angles. I mean, the coins like in motion is a good so, idea, yeah, isn't it? So, well, all the stuff um, you're looking at right now is all going to be coming up in August and November in the rarities. This is obviously a little more expensive stuff. We can look at some of the more um, the, the collector grade stuff uh, a little later. Maybe well, I mean, like that, these are these are just uh, these are the gems. These are collectors grade also, right? Just yeah, these it's are just the dream. These just the with a few few more zeros. I'm <laughs> I'm just trying to think. Like, it, it's hard to not think about these without thinking about price point. Sure. But if you're just thinking about actual, like, what what I would want, it's, that's, like, how would you just pick one? If you had the money for just one of them, regardless of the price point, it's kind of tricky because everyone knows, like, well, you just pick the, the most expensive, right? But, you know. But I'm yeah. just, I'm really absolutely in love with this because of the stunning quality. And uh, there's something about that, Matt. Yeah, that matte matte gold, which is <laughs> just so different, just so unique. And talk about talk about two coins that couldn't look any more different, because you know you almost never see anything with a matte finish to it. That's uh, going to be more of an uh, antiquated U.S. coin. Almost anything you see is going to have more of a cameo or proof-like finish to it. So awesome! Well, guys, thanks so much for watching. I've been the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.